Next, we will talk about the provisioning features of CUCM or different methods of provisioning in more detail here. So we discussed about how uh, the registration process works, how the IP phones get registered, what is the registration process. Now, what are the different methods of registering these phones? There are different methods or configuration methods and tools, which are these. So there is auto registration, there is back bulk administration tool, manual configuration and Cisco self provisioning. These are the four methods for adding or registering IP phones. Some advantages and disadvantages of these we will discuss one by one. Starting with the auto registration. Auto registration in this, auto, it automatically adds the devices. So the devices are automatically added. It is less time consuming. So that is one of the advantage of auto registration. You just make a configuration for auto registration that this will be the start DN, this will be the end DN, this will be the subnet, uh, this will be the TFTP information, DNS, and so on. And then uh, all the end devices will automatically get this information through auto registration. Whereas disadvantages are default settings or random DNs will be provided. So if you just specifically want any device to get a number, let's say 1100, it will not guarantee that it will get that DN only because it depends on the registration process, which is automatic. So, automatic, so any random DN from the range will be provided. Modifications are needed. So when you have to make any changes specifically to any configuration for a device, you have to do the modifications separately as by default on automatic registration, only the pre-configured settings will be provided and will be the same for all the devices. Bulk administration tool can be used for bulk administration as the name says that for a large number of end devices, we can use that. So you can, uh, let's say, go to the bulk administration tool, uh, retrieve a file, which is like a template, it can be in Excel format, in Notepad, so edit the file, add the user, the information of the users or phones, their DN numbers, or even authentication parameters like usernames, passwords, and so on. And then you update it and uh, upload it on the CUCM server, and it will get the information from the template that is being uploaded. So that is used for bulk administration. Here, MAC addresses are required in the bat file. This is one of the disadvantage, or I would say an advantage at times, because if you want to like specifically add a MAC address and bind it with any DN number, that can be done. But it can be a disadvantage when you have to put MAC addresses. It is uh, maybe if there are chances of human errors. And it is more time consuming also because manually you have to add all those details. But once you have the file com uh, completed, you can just go ahead and add it to the CUCM and it will be done for all those devices or the endpoints you have added in the template. Manual configuration is nothing but static, simple. You can manually add. This can be used for small networks. So it is a simple method. You can go ahead and add phones or users using manual configuration. Disadvantage is MAC addresses are required and it is time consuming. So it's Cisco self provisioning. So self provisioning is when the users can make any configurations by it by himself. That is self provisioning using the self provisioning portal. So this gives an ease of use to the users and users can provision themselves. Administrator can provision for the end user as well. These are some advantages and disadvantages are that for self provisioning, you have to create universal device templates, universal line templates, user profiles, feature group templates, configure auto registration also. So make sure auto registration is enabled for self provisioning. Create CTI route point for IVR services if you want to use that. Activate IVR services on the publisher. Populate the service self-service ID using LDAP or BAT or manual. So a complex configuration again for self-provisioning you have to make on the CUCM end and then from the end user perspective, they can go ahead and provision themselves. Cisco Unified Communication Manager BAT. 
So back run or bulk transactions to the CUCM database can be done. This is an efficient method for adding, updating, or deleting a large number of devices. You can do a data export for phones, users, gateways, etc., and it supports localization. This is about BAT, about self-provisioning. It allows an administrator or end user to provide an auto-registered phone to the system with a few simple steps, and users can add a desk phone or soft client without contacting the administrator. Administrators must pre-configure templates and user profiles. User profiles also contain settings for a group of users that include the following tools, that is user device templates, user line template, and user self-provisioning settings that needs to be done. In self-provisioning, first the primary extension is required. You need to create an end user. You need to make sure that the feature group template is there. For the user profile, two things are required, universal line template and universal device template. So these are some prerequisites for self-provisioning. You need end user information, you need primary DN or primary extension, you need feature group template, you need user profile. For user profile, you need line template and device template. So to configure a user profile, for user profile, you have to configure a universal device template which can be a desk phone, mobile and desk phone devices, remote destination and device profiles. You have to configure a line template and allow the end user provisioning. So to allow end user provisioning, make, make sure auto registration is enabled. Then you have to set up auto registration. In auto registration, you have to make sure a start DN and DN is configured, for example, 1001 to 1010. Universal device template needs to be configured and universal line template needs to be configured and associated when you are doing auto registration. So make sure you enable it, provide start DN, end DN, and the device template and line template. Then about the BAT, so there are some components of BAT, like there is BAT template, which I told you that there is a default file uh, for as a BAT template that exists on the CUCM. You can download that. Uh, make the changes, add the users or phones, and so on. Once it is done, you can upload it back, and it will do the bulk administration. A CSV file is there to add devices. You can go ahead and download that file, which exists in the CSV format, make the changes, modify it, whatever, and then go ahead and upload it on the CUCM. With that, with that, what you can do is you can add, you can update, you can delete users or phones. Cisco bulk provisioning service administers and maintains all jobs that are submitted through Cisco Unified Communications Manager BAT listed under database services in the service activation pages. Activate the service for scheduled jobs to be executed. Activate the service only on the CUCM publisher. So for bad provisioning, you do not need to uh, enable bad provisioning service on the subscriber. You have to enable it on the publisher. So if you enable on the publisher, it will be enabled on the subscriber. You cannot directly enable it on the subscriber. Bad template. So bad template is in CSV format. It is a CSV batch file. It gives you a template, a phone template or user template uh, based on whatever you have to add. Maybe. It can be users or phones. Then you give the, these information in the file, device pool, device type, directory number, calling search space, and so on. And you go ahead and upload it to the CUCM database. So the file, the data file templates with macros for different devices, customized file format definition it is. So obviously it is customized so that we can add the information users or phones. It is supported for multiple phone lines. You can add multiple phone lines for the same phone. You can record error checking there. File conversion to CSV format is supported. OK, you can add phones. So for that, you need a phone template, which defines the common setting, and CSV file, which defines the unique parameters, and then import phones from there. 